We are the co-leads of a film that we shot in 2022. Some performers go method, use sense memory, some can turn it on and off like a light switch. And you are one of the most talented individuals with whom I've had the pleasure to work. We must open up our minds. watching the award-winning RxG exclusive hosted by award-winning actor and award-winning filmmaker Robert X Golfin let me start by saying that you are one of the most talented individuals with whom I've had the pleasure to work we are the co-leads of a film that we shot in 2022 and prior to filming I saw your acting reel and was completely blown away. You can do it all from playing the vulnerable hard-working husband and businessman to the menacing dangerous bad guy. There's no limit to your skills and then on set watching you in action I'm sure I speak for the entire cast when I say we all felt a need to step up our game even more. Please tell the people your whole name because I have no doubt that if the world gets it right, your name will soon be known all over. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robert. I was not expecting that introduction. That's, <laughs> that's a lot. So my name is uh, Ibrahim and Hel, and I am from France. I'm based here in Los Angeles, and I've had the pleasure to work with you, and you are uh, uh, a talented actor, producer, director, and, and it's great to be with you today. Well, thank you, sir. And I'm just going to hold for one second. We've got an airplane going. Okay. Feel like we're on set again. Okay. <laughs> uh, you have airplanes. I have, I have dogs in your barn. <laughs> well, I've got to ask. You know, when did you realize you were meant to be an actor? And tell me some of the key differences between the industry in France and the industry in Hollywood, where you're currently based. So. Um, it's a very good question because you know I I, uh, I fell in love with acting when I was uh, I think eight or nine years old. Um, I was in a play uh, in France. You know, at the end of the year we had uh, uh, a play or a presentation, and then um, I had a small part in that play. Uh, it was about an emperor, and then there were soldiers and. He, the my friend who was playing the emperor got scared of the, the role because it was it was a big it was the main role and he didn't want to do it anymore but I was not scared to take that role instead of the, the small soldier role so I got uh, the lead role in that play and then right after um, preparing and showing it to to you know the entire school at the end of the year I I saw how people were coming to me, like my teachers from from years before, came to me and said that they loved, you know, the, the play and they loved my my uh, interpretation and it was funny and everything. And that made me fall in love with you know with acting and with, with being on stage and uh, you know portraying someone that you're not. And then at uh, two years later, I was ten, and then. Um, some people came to our classroom and they were just casting kids for a short film. And I got to be part of that film. And then that was my first experience on set for a movie. The first one was on stage. And then I, I was 10 years old and I was wearing um, a police uniform. And I took it very seriously. And the movie was you know, really, um, it, it was something big for me at, at that time. And that just added to my love for acting and my love for, you know, um, playing different characters. And I think that's what, you know, I, I kept with me until now, that, that, you know, that love for being able to portray different people and, uh, you know, different personalities and different, with different backgrounds. Now, we're both actors, and we've had to go to some pretty emotional places. Some performers go method, use sense memory. Some can turn it on and off like a light switch. And long after picture wrap, some take these characters home 
where they overstay their welcome. How does your degree in psychology help guide you as a performer? And do you find it easy to balance real life from the characters you play? So, um, my background is, is in psychology. I, I got a master's um, in psychology from France. And then I worked with uh, kids with autism um, when I was back there in France for, for three to four years. So, psychology, because, you know, I also studied method acting when I was in France with an American teacher who studied with Lee Strasberg, and he was in the, in the same class as Dustin Hoffman and Al Pacino and all these, you know, uh, big actors. So uh, for me, met, uh, acting and psychology are, you know, they go together because um, as an actor, you have to have a... Um, your luggage, you know, you have to, to be carrying suitcases with experience from, from life, you know, uh, so that you can uh, go into a certain place because you're portraying a certain character. And psychology is, you know, when you're ana uh, analyzing different personalities, and if you have empathy for people, empathy for patients that, that you uh, work with, then it is easier for you to uh, use that, that experience and that background and this uh, luggage to portray your characters and, and it's easier to portray you know, extreme characters and emotions because for me, it helped me you know, having a background in psychology and also all the other jobs that I did at the very uh, um, early uh, stage of my life when I knew that I wanted to be an actor and that's what I wanted to do. Everything that I do, every job that I do, I take it as a, um, a training for uh, a potential future character I'm going to portray. Even though I don't have that part yet, but I have to you know, keep taking the, the experience from, from, you know, from uh, your jobs, from your uh, life, from your daily life. And then, so that, that's how psychology helped me, uh, you know, dive into characters and into the craft. Well, Among the dramatic characters you've played, quite a few of them know their way around a gun. The tragic 2021 death of a cinematographer, Helena Hutchins, on set of the upcoming film Rust, sent shockwaves through the Hollywood community. The industry demanded change with regard to the use and safety of firearms on set. As both an actor and a film producer, what challenges do you face when making sure the cast and crew are secure when firearms are used on camera? That's, uh, that's very important because, you know, um, it was a tragic event and, and uh, the thing is, most of the, the movies I, I, uh, I was in or I helped produce, they most of the time they have firearms, you know, the story has firearms, and so I think it's very important to um, make sure that all safety uh, procedures are respected, and you know, that that um, there's someone on set that is responsible of, you know, making sure that um, these procedures are respected, and that, that the actors are not playing around with you know with firearms even though they even if they're they're fake you never know you know what, what can happen and um I, I had several experiences with with uh, firearms on set where you know i see the first reaction that anybody has is to just hold the gun and and play with it you know so yeah, I think I think arguably a lot of actors revert back to childhood with that whole let's play cops and robbers. Yeah, exactly. And then so if there is no regulation, that that can lead to tragic events that like this one. And um, so that that's that's very uh, that's very important for me as, a, as an actor or and as a producer too, because I've been a, a a producer on sets where I had to make sure that. Um, you know, the firearms were used, uh, you know, properly. And even though I, I knew that uh, some of them, you know, were just plastic guns, 
just as a habit, you have to tell people not to just you know point randomly at, at, at someone because if if it's a fake gun today, they might be on another set with something that's not the same, it's not fake, and they will have the habit of just playing around with it. So that was something, you know, this and other aspects too, like anything that can be dangerous, any, you know, uh, fire, smoke, you know, anything like that. And I think you have to to make sure to to have someone regulating it and, you know, or a police officer that is on set to make sure that everything goes right. Absolutely. Now you're fluent in several languages from English and Arabic to Italian and Spanish. How did you become multilingual and how does it benefit your career and your everyday life? So um, definitely, yeah, it, it benefited my, my career and it's a choice that I made again, you know, um, very early um, when I was in school in France, you know, in, in France, we speak French and it's very hard to learn any other languages. And, uh, you know, we, we usually just speak French, you know, all around us with, with our families, with our friends. But I, um, I grew up in, a, in an Egyptian family. So my, both my parents are from Egypt and I was born and raised in Paris. So all my life I was, I had to speak Egyptian, which is Arabic, it's a, a, a different dialect of Arabic. I had to speak Egyptian, Arabic with my parents and with my family, my cousins in Egypt, and with my brothers, we were speaking French because, you know, we grew up in France, so it's, it's easy for us to communicate in French. But then at school in French, you have to uh, choose a, two, two languages. So English is a must, and then I had the choice uh, between Spanish, German, Italian, so I chose Spanish because I just, I liked, you know, how it sounded. And then I learned Italian by myself because I felt that, you know, it, it, French, Spanish, and German, uh, Italian, they come from Latin. So it's the same roots. So it's kind of not too hard to learn one of them when you know the other. And it all came from, uh, you know, you have to love languages. I, I, I love, you know, Languages and also cultures. It's not just a language. It's uh, the culture that goes with it, and uh, the ability to communicate with someone who's not uh, from your background. I think that opens up, you know, your perspective on life, on and you know your your uh, experience on Earth. So I've always been in love with languages, and then for acting, of course, this is something that I wanted to use. Uh, to portray different characters and um so like that's one of the reasons i uh i moved to to la too i didn't answer that question you asked me in the beginning about france, between france and la is and, and the us is in france the options were not that big um like in in the us in france um First of all, when I moved from France eight years ago, the industry was not um, as diverse as nowadays in France. Because now with all the platforms, you have Netflix, Paris. They have you know uh, American productions are shooting in, in Paris and all around Europe. But eight years ago, I felt that my options were limited in terms of playing characters. And also languages. Mm -hmm. I felt that you know, if I speak four languages, I have to go somewhere where I can use these languages, and that's why I moved to LA. And then that's why I I started to choose my characters based on you know what I knew uh, from from psychology and from the languages that I speak. So I you know I love to be portraying um, like I, I portrayed like last year right after our. Uh, film we did together, I went to Vegas and I was, I was portraying a drug cartel lord. And I had to speak Spanish and I rehearsed uh, with the Mexican accent and I, I, I learned my script and I got the part and then this is one of the, the ways I, I use languages and then I love accents too. So um, I've been to New York twice last year to, uh, you know, shooting characters where 
um, I, I, I portrayed a, car a character who was a, an Egyptian immigrant in New York in the 80s. So, of course, the, the, the Egyptian accent is easy for me to, to do because, you know, I, you know, my parents had that accent and I, uh, it's something that I have in me. And doing it in English was, was fun because that showed me that, you know, I, I can use my languages and accents to, to portray different characters, especially here in Hollywood, something that I, I wouldn't do in France, you know. Well, Ibrahim, what projects do you have coming up that viewers can look forward to? Well, so first of all, I really look forward to our movie. Uh, I hope we're going to be able to uh, share it with everybody soon because it's a very uh, um, interesting and uh, important um, subject. And an expedition. And an extra family to just drop you off on me. I have bills piling up. I can't pay vendors for product. You support a country that don't give a damn about us. If it was a single shot, or for the most part. Oh, what have I done, no? And, um... And I'm also working on, uh, you know, I, I work on the documentary, The Dissident, the poster, this is uh, a documentary that I uh, uh, I started working in it while I was studying business in my school. And so I started working in, in the production, and then I ended up being a, an associate producer on the documentary because I, you know, I, I helped with so many uh, aspects of it. And also acting, uh, we had a VFX acting sequences that I, I acted in, and I hired actors to to be in that in these sequences. And so uh, right now I'm uh, about to start working with Brian Fogel again, who is a, an Oscar winner, who um, you know won the Oscar for Icarus. And um, hopefully I'll you know I, I'll I'll be able to uh, participate in his uh, next projects. You know, in producing and, and acting. And, uh, you know, still auditioning and, you know, uh, looking for new parts and uh, choosing the, the right ones. And, and hopefully, you know, we'll see uh, some good projects in, in, in the future. I'm sure we will. And I can't wait till we're able to work together again. That'll be great. Uh, <laughs> I'm also working on a, on a short film that I'm producing and acting in uh, that we're going to shoot in about the month. And it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a very uh, um, emotional story. And it's based on, uh, on real events. It's, uh, it's called Speaker Boy. And it's the story of uh, a young African-American boy who's uh, singing and performing on Venice, uh, in Venice Beach. And his father is um, pushing him to, to be, you know, uh, better every day. He's, you know, he's making money singing and, and then uh, his father has uh, problems, has gambling debts with uh, the local uh, gangster. And I'm going to be portraying that, that gangster and, uh, you know, that it's a, the story of the boy story who, you know, juggling between being a, a, a little boy and then he wants to play with his friends, he wants to do, to do skateboarding, but at the same time he has to work to make money and help his father and help his family. So it's a, it's a great story that I am helping produce and acting in, and that's the big project that I, I have in the coming uh, couple of months. Well, you've sold me. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your time, my friend. Make sure to like, comment, and hit subscribe on our YouTube channel so you never miss out. RxG Exclusives, hosted by Robert X. Golfin.
now playing.